It's a beautiful day to get out and get amongst a few redfin. It's May, it's traditionally a time when you're going to catch some good sized redfin in slightly deeper water. I'm going out here at Talangata to see whether it's true. Good afternoon folks and welcome back to Fish Talk Video. We're out on Lake Hume again today, Talangata Arm of Lake Hume or the Mitter Arm as it's probably more correctly known. It is autumn and traditionally in autumn the uh, size of the redfin does tend to get a little bit bigger. You might not get as many but by gee if they do uh, start to school up you can get amongst some rippers. So having fished this area for the last 20 years or so there's a couple of banks where I've always been successful at this time of the year. So I'm going to go straight up there and try them out. Usually it's in about 30 foot of water. Hopefully I'll be able to just use blades and uh, soft plastics to locate them. And then uh, if that's the case, I should do all right. Please don't forget to subscribe and to like the uh, video. And uh, if you hit the little notification bell, you'll get more from Fish Talk Video in the future. Okay, so the first task now, I've found the spot that I want to fish at. First task is to try and find the depth. Now I'm looking for somewhere around about 30 feet to start with. And I'm just going to drift first, I'm not going to anchor up. So that way hopefully I can uh, drift onto a school. If that's the case then I'll anchor up and I can get into them that way. But at the moment I'm only in 19, 20 foot of water. So I need to keep on moving out a little bit until I get to, to the area that I want to be. Right, so we're on. Probably in about 20 to 25 foot of water, I would think. A few head shakes. So maybe it'll be a keeper, I'm not sure. We'll find out. Oh yes, a nice fish. Nice fish there. That'll do us. Okay, all right, time to get the boat back out because we're about to run aground. Okay, another fish on. Nice head shake. Not a huge fish, but a keeper. All right, so that's two fish on the soft plastic teaser so far. That's indicating. Here's a quick check. No sign of the virus. So you can be kept. We're on again. Not going to make a big bold prediction on these. They're fighting very well for smaller fish, I must admit. That's a better fish. Or is he? Um, yeah, no, he's all right. He might keep. So in that direction there. So this is what you've got to do, folks. You, you've got to find the school. And when you do find them, when you do locate them, get into them. Just keep them active. Now, often, because I fish with my mate Jamie, there you are. Oh, yep. Fish with my mate Jamie. We can have two lures going into them like that. Keeps them in a frenzy. So I've got onto a school now. I'm going to keep at them until I've got my feed. This is a better fish. Much better fish. Now, there's something to show you here. This fish has taken the front hook because that's what redfin do. They, uh, they eat their prey head first if they can manage it because you can imagine if you're trying to eat that from behind then getting those spikes far better off to come from the front lay them down bang you're in okay so that's why they take the front hook and we know where the school is so we'll just keep casting towards them like i say if there were two of us in the boat we'd both be casting smack bang into that same spot because we know that's where the school is congregating 
and that keeps them uh, they're fiercely competitive fish there we go we're on again as you can see they don't like one of their mates to beat them to a piece of tucker so uh, often you'll get a second one on the way in as well another smaller fish you're toying with me and he's taking it on the way down I'm sure of that taking it on the flutter and there it was too much for you mate wasn't it just too much for you you couldn't resist it in the end bingo you're done <laughs> okay now I would be fairly certain that their stomach contents when I do them tonight are going to contain small redfin because that's what they're taking my presentations as small reddies so folks this is the method that we're going to be using for the rest of the day uh, as you can see that's my rig I have a um, strike pro blade at the bottom a heavy one 26 grams with a Berkeley drop shot minnow above to imitate a small redfin chasing a small redfin and uh, fan cast put it out there and uh, let it hit the bottom and just jump it back towards you if they're around they pretty well cannot resist it now the question here is it's been a little bit slow fish aren't real big do I leave or do I try somewhere else or perhaps even come back later in the day okay there's a fish playing here oh there we go we've got one yeah that's not a bad fish he has swallowed that soft plastic so he won't be going back anyway he's not going to live but gee, the uh, soft plastic seems to be the go today they are chasing that little redfin imitation there that it's probably been a bit mangled but doesn't seem to worry them all right that's eight I think I've milked it and look I will I'll come back later on it's only 10 past two oh there's a fish on right beside the boat <laughs> oh dear okay how about that eh again the soft plastic out fishing the blade probably six or seven to one at the moment right now i was hooked up on a snag then and then as soon as i got off i had a fish on now often they can swim you onto those snags so which is possibly what this little fella did and the snag was really only a bit of uh, aquatic weed but he has taken that right down into the gills so he's not going to survive try and get your uh, soft plastics as straight as possible on the hook too because uh, presentation does matter presentation matters a lot actually even with redfin just moved along this same bank a little and uh, drop the line down just have a look and straight into what feels like a very nice fish actually oh yes it's a double header that i've been oh dear roscoe you gotta learn to use a net man you gotta learn to use a net I'm not sure this is gonna make up for that one i lost but feels a reasonable fish uh, it's a little double oh no it's a single and another one's swimming with it 
back out to about 30 foot of water now. Lost a very nice fish there before by not using the net. I've got to remember that in future that no matter how well I think it's hooked, when they're that big, that membrane in their mouth is pretty light on and uh, they tear very easily. If you've got a fish with a fair bit of weight behind it, um, you can tear the hook out of their mouth and that there is a problem. So anyway, hopefully he's not the only one that size there because he was probably a pound and a half I would think just looking at him in the water. Okay, there's one. Keep the rod tip up a bit. And if he looks as though he's a decent fish, get, slip the net under him. Which he is, but he's on the soft plastic. I don't think it's gonna matter. That's, folks, what we've come for. That's a nice red fin. He will be somewhere around 33, 34 centimeters, I would think. There's a nice fish there, nice red fin. Well and truly took the soft plastic, so he might have to come home. Unless I can, oh no, I was able to get him off reasonably well, he can go too. Right, I'm going to just drop straight down below the boat here now, just see if there's any of the school that's moved in close. We're in 28 foot of water. So we'll just see if there's anything. And there is. There we go. This is a good fish. Unless I've side hooked him. Oh, he's a good fish. He's a good fish. Right, this time I'll take the net approach. Even though he was on the single hook, which tends to hook better. Okay. Flared. He's ready for a fight, this bloke. So there we go. That's a nice fish. Not huge. Um, probably around the 29 mark, this bloke. Uh, he's, oh, he's 31 as well. Same as that one in there. Okay. Directly below the boat. Oh, yes. There was a fish following underneath that then. So, uh, they're worth another cast. He's big enough for the pot. All right, here we go. Coming out of quite deep water. I would say probably 35 feet or better over there where I'm sitting in 28 here at the back of the boat so uh, taking a while for it to get back to the bottom there we go we're on oh yeah big fish following and we've got ourselves a double. Some big fish following that. Interesting today, I haven't put one fish in the uh, kill tank that has had the virus. I uh, don't think I've put any back either that have had the virus. So it's been a virus free day, which is wonderful. So I'm trying to cast exactly where I cast before because that's where the uh, the school appears to be <laughs> well it's actually closer to the boat but the idea is to go past the school and then drag it back through them get them all cranky seeing these things come into their territory they're not territorial they're actually just attacking it for the food value there's no other reason that they're doing it they are a ravenous species. They eat and they eat and they eat. 
I might just, well, not so much cut the losses, but oh, here we go. We're on. There we go. <laughs> You're making it hard to leave, you guys. You're making it really hard to leave. Oh, here's another look. Nice looking pair. You can go. And you can go too. Okay, nice little double header there at the end of the day. And I think I'll keep both of those, so good looking fish. Okay, might be time to anchor up again. Right, one more. They're leaping on them, I'll give them that. Oh, this one's got a bit of grunt. It's got a bit of grunt. Let's see what you look like. In under the boat, you meant to be out here a bit. Oh, it's a double. It is a double. It is a double. Let's try something a little bit different. Something over that way. This will be the last cast, folks. We're at the end of the day now, so uh, time for me to go home. I did say I'd be home before 5 o'clock, and I'll be battling to do that. It's almost 4.30 now by the time you get in. When you're loading boats onto trailers on your own, it takes a while. So thanks again for watching. This has been Fish Talk Video. I've enjoyed your company. I hope you've enjoyed mine. And oh, there's a fish to finish the day. There's a fish to finish the day. What do you know? And it's not a bad fish either. By the feel of that. Oh, come on, I want to see you, if nothing else. Oh dear. Yes. <laughs> well, that's not a bad way to end the day, is it? Look at the size of that fella. That is a very nice red fin. A very nice red fin. How's that for a very ready? That's a beauty, isn't it? Like that. Okay. Well, folks, it's been a fine session on the redfin this afternoon. This is autumn. This is uh, mid-May. And the fish were predominantly in 25 to 35 feet of depth. Um, some good fish amongst them. A lot of smaller fish as well, as you get with redfin fishing. But it goes to show that they don't actually go off after the summer. You can get out there, you can still get amongst them, and you can still get a good feed, as long as you're targeting them in the right spots. They're not gonna be in the super shallow water at this time of the year. They're gonna be out more in the depths. So make sure you fish your target that way. A uh, bit harder to find them with the traditional method of trolling to find them because if they're in 30 odd foot of water, you need a, uh, a, a really deep diver to get down to that. So really you gotta just spot check drive from spot to spot you might notice that I don't tie up to trees 
I fish mainly in open water and I do all right. I feel I do all right anyway. So it's up to you, but if you're a, um, a redfin fisherman that thinks you've got to tie up to trees, give that a try as well. Um, you probably got more chance doing that of picking up a decent yellow belly as well, I must admit. So it might be worth a try. But anyway, thanks for watching Fish Talk video. Hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell. And leave me a comment and a like down below. I'd love to hear from you. This has been Fish Talk video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.